Hello and welcome to In The Mix with yours truly, Jeannie Ortega, coming to you from my hometown, New York City. <laughs> it is my honor to be your host today on TBN Salsa. I want to take this time to thank Matt and Lori Crouch, as well as Samuel Rodriguez, for giving me another opportunity to boast on my God. You know, with this show, it's my heart to highlight people in music, movies, media, and ministry that are doing things for the kingdom of God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. But it also says that God has given each and every one of us a gift to share with each other as good stewards of his amazing grace. So today, I get to introduce you to somebody that's doing just that. This next guest is a dear friend of mine, and he's also a Grammy-nominated music producer, artist, worship pastor. By the age of eight years old, my guest was leading choirs in his church. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my good friend. He is so many things. I would say uh, the esteemed Freddie Washington singing his single, Closer. Closer, I want to be closer. 
draw me near I feel you here I want to be closer I want to be closer draw me near I feel you here I want to be closer I want to be closer draw me near I feel you here I want to be closer I want to be closer draw me near yeah I feel you here I want to be closer 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 I want to be close I want to be close to you I want to be closer I want to be closer I want to be closer Freddie, if I could do what you did on the piano, I would be set, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you, to, to see have you, you here. I'm glad to be here. To just introduce your music to TV and Salsa. Oh, thanks. No, I'm glad to be here. I'm very excited. You know, uh, what you guys don't know about Freddie Washington is that he's been doing this since a little while now forever <laughs> it definitely seems that way <laughs> since eight years old you've been uh, yeah working just in music in general yeah, that's right uh you're a pastor's kid pk um so all right we'll talk about the musical stuff but tell okay. me a little bit about that just growing up as a yeah. pastor's kid i absolutely loved growing up in church mm -hmm. you know i really did i think that it's it has its positive and negatives one of the negatives is that everyone has a church face on you know, and when you're young, you don't understand that these people are imperfect people just like you. Wow. You know, and I think that, you know, at an early age, it was hard so wait, for me. What's the church face? So well, people that are not, you know, that they I'll, don't I'll know. tell you what it is. Yeah, tell yeah me. I'll tell you what it is. So, you know, hey, how you doing? It's like, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just these automatic responses that we give, that we're taught to give because we almost feel like it's not okay to not be okay. Mm. But sometimes we're not okay. Yeah. And I think that it's it's helpful for us to just be honest about that because it doesn't do any damage to the gospel. I mean, that's the great mm. thing about mm. the good news of Jesus yes. is that it, the good news of Jesus is just as true in your darkest moments as it is when you're on the mountaintop. Absolutely. And I think that um, growing up in church, um, it just, it was a great environment. Um, it was a lot of great people so around people, me. When you say you grew up in church, people think you're born saved, you were set. No. Tell, tell no. me a little bit about your own personal thing, because that's yeah. hard. Like, yeah. I didn't grow up in the church. So for me, right. it was like a night and day conversion, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So how does it work for people mm -hmm. that are pastor's children or mm -hmm. you grow up in church? How's well, that? I've heard, I mean, I've heard plenty of horror stories, you know, about kids who grew up as pastor's kids, and, you know, they resent the church or they resent you know church people yeah. you know because a lot of times it pulls your family away from you it pulls your parents away from you at times because they've got to serve um and i think that for me it's the grace of god you know we all come to it differently and i think that it's the grace of god that i didn't feel those feelings of resentment or feel yeah. those feelings of um abandonment even mm -hmm. you know but for me, God kind of identified very early um, by watching my father and watching my mother in ministry yeah. what my purpose was and what really? where my life would go. And so for me, I think I ended up jumping in early. Okay. You know, so to you serve. were involved. Yeah, I was you, involved. Well, at eight years was, old, you're yeah, directing I, I, choirs. I was involved. <laughs> you know, I was involved. I very early on um, was able to understand why I was here. Oh. And I think that that has a lot of value and it helped me to process why. You had purpose. Yeah. 
And Absolutely. that's and the truth is that a lot of us are running and we're doing all types of messy things because yeah. we feel the lack of purpose sure. and we're trying to fulfill that with I've, something. I've, I've heard it said that if you don't understand the purpose of a thing, abuse is inevitable. Mm. And I think that I've seen that. You know, when you don't understand the purpose for your life, you will inevitably abuse it. Wow. I've watched people who didn't see past their present circumstance mm -hmm. just live a life that would forfeit the very things that God had for them in the future because they didn't see beyond where they were. Yeah. And I think that for me, by the grace of God, I was able to see that modeled in people yeah. in the church. You know, and that's why I, I still go back to I was so grateful to be a PK, growing up in church, you know, born on the pew, as they say, you know, <laughs> because I was able to see that worked out in the lives of people around me. And I think Beautiful. that it helped me to desire more for my life. So how well. do you go from a pastor's kid to a Grammy nominated, was it music producer? Yeah. How um, does that happen? Because you were nominated for a Grammy. For, yeah, for production. So when I first, okay, yeah. so. How does that happen? Well, I could walk <laughs> you back to the very beginning, which is me just in a church practicing on piano, trying to learn a couple of chords. Wow. Um, I think that, um, you know, I had to spend those nights working hard to try to develop my craft and try to to grow in what the gifting that God had given me. Mm -hmm. um, I started on drums and then I moved to piano um, and then eventually organ and, wow. and guitar. Um, you know, the church I grew up in is a hand clapping foot stomping church. So <laughs> I was on the organ every Sunday. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and you know, you don't start off at the finish line. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah, a process. Yeah. Um, and I think that we're all still striving and growing. Um, but for me, it took a long time. It took years, you know, of just being in, in the church and practicing and working hard. And, you know, you put forth an effort and then God helps you. Yeah. You know, God helps you to overcome the frustration of wanting to be further, but knowing you're not there yet. Yeah. You know. So do you, um, as, a, as somebody, so let's say there's people out there that have that desire yeah. to to want to do more yeah. um, and they they're in church and they're playing sure. they're doing that what do you what do you say to them how do they get from point a to point b is it divine is it hmm. something because you know um I, I think i read this in a devotional this sure. morning actually where uh just using the scripture um they that wait on the lord uh, shall renew their strength. So wait just means wait. So a lot of people are like, okay, I'm just going to wait here mm -hmm. till it happens. But it says they shall walk, run and oh, not be weary, right? Yeah. And they shall walk and never faint, which yeah. turns into an action. Yep. So you have to run in order Absolutely. not to get weary. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about that because there's a lot of people that are just like, but you know, I have all these talents. Should I yeah. just wait right here? What yeah. do you do? Well, first I would say be patient with yourself because impatience will always cause you to be frustrated in the process. Mm. You know, I mean, you know, like I said, no one starts out the finish line. Mm -hmm. You've got to work and you've got to, you know, toil, <laughs> you know, it, and it can be very frustrating. And oftentimes what you're working for requires you to be in a space where you're oftentimes just alone, you know, with God mm. and just you're pressing through yeah. and you're fighting through and so for me, I would first say be patient with yourself because you're not going to start off knowing how to do all of the things that eventually you will grow to know how to do. Yeah. Um, and then I would also say you've just really got to trust God, mm. you know, and it sounds kind of like, you know, cliche, yeah. so just, but you really do because you have to know that he has a plan in all of it. I look back now at things that I thought were totally useless experiences mm. and I see the purpose in them and I realize there's no way that even on my best day, I could have ever fashioned the process to be perfectly the way that it was, yeah. you know, but it's God, it's the handiwork yeah. of God. And he's intimately involved in every little detail. So even when you're doing whatever, practicing, you know, whatever it is, you know, whether you feel like you're celebrated or whether you feel like you're working in a very thankless <laughs> um, environment, yes. just know that he's got a plan and a purpose in all of it. And eventually it will be seen if, you know, you stay consistent and if you have faith. Yeah. And you don't faint. And we see yeah. that in your life, you know, starting really young and practicing and practicing to eventually, you know, getting a, mm. a is it one Grammy nomination? Yeah, for, for an album um, that I did. Actually, for an album that I did in Christian hip-hop. Wow. That 
I, you know, I'm not really a huge Christian hip hop guy. Like I don't really, I mean, yeah. I know it and I listen to it, um, <laughs> but it's not like, I never thought I'd produce it. Um, so a friend of mine called me to, to work on his album and you know, it was from that, that that opportunity came. And it just goes to show that you don't know how God will move in yeah, your life. Yeah, exactly. You and you had a know. plan, and yeah. God was like, well, you're going to do a hip hop record that's going to get you a great motivation. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I can look back at so many things and say, well, that's not how I thought that was going to yeah. go. You know, but yeah. it's the handiwork of God. Yeah, and then, you know, from that, you know, you, you stay faithful in mm -hmm. your craft, and then eventually, and this is how we met, yeah. you end up at the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Yeah, yeah. You know, their six-time Grammy Award-winning choir yeah. and all of that, and you're called on to be the music director mm -hmm. and lead the worship, mm -hmm. and, you know, even in young adult ministry, I mean, we, yeah. we did all, you we know. We did all that together. We did, I know. <laughs> I was just one of the singers, and Freddie was doing really all the work. <laughs> no, no, no way. It's amazing, <laughs> you know, just to see how God was opening these these yeah. doors and yeah. you know I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be there and experience what we sure. did um, you know but you so here you are now being called in mm -hmm. by other people and other sure. choirs sure. to come in and 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 add to what they already have and you know the Brooklyn Tabernacle is very established mm -hmm. and they, they're doing well yeah. so to have that honor to come on board yeah. and say hey you know Freddie like what do, what can you like contribute how can we collaborate and take this further but that's How's again that? why yeah. I say that the process is really important mm. because even in that, and in every in everything that I've kind of um, seen happen over the years, I realize, oh, but there were so many things that happened during a season that could have been particularly frustrating yeah. and lonely and quiet and just, you know, day in and day out, you're just kind of working on what you're working on yeah. and trying to grow. But you realize later that it's the process, whatever you gain from that, mm -hmm. that gives you the ability to add to anything else. Wow. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just the way that that works. And there's not really a button you can push to make it go faster or make it go slower. It's not really up to you, it's up yeah. to God. But what you can be doing is yeah. be being faithful mm -hmm. over the scene, season that he has you in. Because it's in that season that you'll gain what you need to gain that's gonna give whatever else you do weight. And I think that um, I've, I've seen that in, in my life and I've seen that in the lives of others who have just modeled that steady faithfulness, you know, and I've not, I'm sure, been as steady as many of the people that I've watched, mm. um, you know, but I've seen that modeled. I've seen that modeled in people, you know, in areas of the creative arts, but also in spiritual disciplines. I mean, in prayer, I've seen that modeled in people who yes. just, you know, they were consistent in prayer. And those are the people you call. Yeah, Cause exactly. You, when you need... Someone to pray. That's who you're calling. You know that mother, yeah. that yeah. church mother. <laughs> Listen, she knows how to get a prayer through. Yes. Um, but it comes through that process, you know, and it's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's the road with the difficulty in some sense mm -hmm. that is the road that leads to the rewards. And if you fast forward that season, then where your tank could have been full, mm -hmm. it'll be slightly empty or slightly less because you cut past where God was equipping you, a season where he was making you stronger, you know, making you more faithful, making, you know, giving you wisdom, you know, and equipping you for the season that he would bring you into where, you know, you'll actually be able to be a blessing to other people and, and nothing, serve. Nothing is wasted. Nothing's wasted. Nothing happens in vain. Nothing. You know, not with our God. Nothing. You graduated from uh, just behind the scenes kind of in, in the sense of just playing the music and doing that stuff, which usually producers are not seen as much, sure. to being in the forefront and being the worship pastor and a leader mm -hmm. and you even an artist. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I didn't know. want it. I'll be honest and say that I was perfectly fine um, in the background um, with the production because it's it's a little safer. It is. <laughs> you know, I it's, mean, it's just it's just scarier to be in it, front of it, the it thing. Just I get is. you. It just is. I mean, there's there are responsibilities that come with that, um, that are just more difficult in in some ways than just being you know, producing behind the scenes, just you know, making music, mm -hmm. and I think that. Even my personality, you know, I'm not necessarily, I'm probably like some kind of introvert, extrovert, you know, I'm not. <laughs> You're an omnivore. Yeah, something yeah. like that, you know, so <laughs> there, there is this grace that God 
has to give you, even to press past your own personal idiosyncrasies and things that um, maybe you might be timid about, you know, or even maybe possibly even fearful of, mm. you know, God has to press you out of that comfort zone because it all builds faith. Yeah. And I think that... You worked um, on a record, right? Correct. Yeah. The, the uh, first record. The first record, the Jesus record. The Jesus record, yes. which I love. It's that was... Like, th what's ready? The Jesus record. <laughs> if you had any... Uh, you about know, what it's about. Yeah, if you had any, like, uh, <laughs> questions, like, it's the Jesus record. Yeah. And I, it's so good. Yeah, I feel like um, it's been so many years since yeah. I... Yeah. And now you're working on a brand new album. Working on a brand new album. And you, um, you recently worked with uh, United Pursuit. Yeah. Yes. And on um, their record, like helping them with their record, kind of like what you did with the Brooklyn Tabernacle, which I just love how people recruit you. And, you know, you get to learn from them. They learn Absolutely. from you and the collaboration. Just, Absolutely. To me, I, you know, I'm an artist and I love collaborating yeah. because you get the best of two minds come together and, yeah. and, and just experiences come together and it's, it, it, births, it births something awesome. Yeah. So you did that and then you're working on a record yes. now for yourself, a new Freddie Washington yes, record. Yes, ma'am. That's and right. you're also doing work with the Billy Graham Association. Yeah, yeah. So how does that come into play? Well, so we've been doing um, sort of prayer meetings um, in different parts of the country, um, you know, just kind of calling the, on the church to pray. And oh. um, so I've been leading worship for those, and it's been a really a great oh, experience. Man. I mean, you know, the legacy that Billy Graham, even just himself, has left and the foundation, I think um, it's just an honor to even be a part of that. Yeah. Um, and to just kind of rewind back to the, the United Pursuit thing. Um, one thing that I really do love to do is I love to come alongside people and, and help and serve. Um, and I think that, you know, people are always looking for people like that. I know I always am. Oh so my it's, gosh. It's great what, to be You wanna help? <laughs> you wanna serve? Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, that's been a, a joy to kind of um, jump in and roll up your sleeves and, and just help other people's vision come to fruition, um, you know, because we all have dreams and visions. And I think yes. that, um, you know, for me, it's, it's a blessing to be able to sow and invest in places, um, you know, because it's all that we're all on the same On team. Good it's the soil church too. It's, it's the not church. like you're taking your gifts that God gave you and you're putting it in the world. You're sowing on good soil, yeah. so you get what you put in. It's all we're all on the same team. Yes. And you, you know. don't want to be called a specific artist. So gospel, no. Contemporary, no. Well, I feel like I've been in a, a unique space these days where I've just been in so many different, um, you know areas of the church yeah. that I've just loved being able to just kind of be wherever, you know, and at, without me, labels and just kind of. That's the kingdom of God. It's, it's the, yeah. We put ourselves in a box and God is like, but I want to do something else. Yeah. <laughs> Get out yeah. of that box. Yeah. I want to use you in another way. Yeah. So I'm excited to introduce uh, your next song right now. Yeah. Here's my dear friend, Freddie Washington, singing his song, He Understands. Sometimes in life you ask the question why Every day seems like just an endless fight You wonder if he sees just how tough it can be To deal with all the hurt and pain you feel inside I'm talking to a mother who lost her precious child I'm talking to that broken man with tears in his eyes. He understands, he knows and he cares. He'll give you so much peace, it'll be all right. Yeah. He will always be there, nail scars in his hands. My friend, he understands, he understands. Understands. I know it can be so discouraging looking back at all the 